what's up guys welcome to another video and today we're going to be removing this pizza v unit um to get this one out of the way pretty much have to remove the fuel lines that that's connected all the way to the high pressure fuel pump so they have connection one bolt one here 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 uh, these two right here got to remove this and then we can remove all this right here pull that up and uh, most importantly uh, just to get room to remove this unit this hose right here you got to remove it as well that's connected directly to the, um, the thermostat so there's gonna be a bolt back there hiding so I'll try and show it to you. It's kind of hiding back there, but uh, it's uh, I think it's a T25 or T30. But you remove that, and once you remove all of that, pretty much uh, get all the bolts all the way around this itself. Pull it out, clean it up, remove, replace it with a new new unit, and that's pretty much straightforward. So that's basically the goal, what we're trying to do. But let's get on it. so I finally got it out it was a little bit tough because it's been sitting for so long and it feels tight almost felt like something was holding it but it was just sticky so all we have right now is the injectors exposed um, just to let you know when you get it off it's gonna drain a lot of uh, fuel so I guess I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a huge puddle but I got to clean that up anyways uh, also very important to mention that do not do not do not do not open the door by any means necessary while you're in the process of doing this because you will make a mess um, and uh, naturally the car will prime when you open the door so you don't want that you don't want that extra mess uh, so what's next what's next next thing to do is remove that T25, I believe, this pipe that's actually hovering over this unit. And then we should be good. We could take everything apart.
So, with the old one, you can tell the gasket is pretty much flush to the unit. And uh, it's on its way out. I mean, it's probably already started with the leak. With the new one, you can clearly tell it's above the unit. So it will have a good seal. So, yep. Yeah. Now, this only thing I got to replace between these two is this line right here. I got to replace this line and put it on this one. And then, obviously, the bracket, put it right here. Then we should be good to go. Well, I got both the vent holes and the bracket on to the new one so this you um you don't want to really want to mess this up so let's get like a little hook get in between and just keep prying prying until it expands and then once you get it out you put this in you put this one back in the new one and then you'll get uh some kind of clamp tool to squeeze the inner points, not the outer, so the inner points. So for me, I have one of this tool. So I'll grab it here and just squeeze as hard as I can until it's it's locked and you kind of like, you know, move it around, tug it, make sure it's secure. So, you, you know, you won't have any problems in the future. I've finished clean all the like debris and dirt and stuff like that that's stuck on the around the layer and uh the hard parts where would obviously where the leak is probably coming from i'll go ahead and use like a, a little like a little metal brush nothing too harsh like a little metal brush like a soft metal brush like i have here just to get the the, the stubborn grinds off and then get like a rag and wipe it off and just do that cycle over and over until it looks as clean as it can be Okay, so we got everything into back in together, snugged in. Um, I haven't tightened them yet, but use a T30, and you want to use like a um, torque stick, and you want to torque these each of these uh, at nine newton meters all the way around, and then after um, after that, you're gonna install this gasket that goes to this pipe. That goes back into the uh, thermostat housing. All right, so everything is intact. This, like I said, this is fixed. Um, the bolt in the back for this line that goes to the uh, thermostat housing is secured. I put a new gasket in. This is the old one. It looks pretty chewed up. So knock that out. Put the bolt back in over there in the back take your time please because it's, it's kind of hard especially in the angle you don't want to strip it so i just tighten it just enough i didn't want to over tighten it because i was scared to strip that thing um put everything back together over there so i don't forget anything and now the next step is to replace these uh in these i'm sorry next step is to replace these gaskets and then reinstall them back in their right location so got the old ones out they're not bad some of them are a little bit more brittle than the others and uh we installed new ones so they'll feel a lot more full so i know they'll be good now let's put them back together all right so we reached our final installation so i just re um reinstalled the lines all the way through um just a heads up before you tighten the brackets go ahead and just have them snugged in so you can wiggle and adjust as, as much as you can to, to um to get the threads caught up on um, both well all three of them for this one this one and then from the high pressure fuel pump and then after everything is snugged in you go ahead and tighten these tighten these up. Also, just tighten these. There's no, you don't really need a specific torque for those as well. Uh, don't forget to reconnect the uh, sensor, the um, pressure sensor, fuel pressure sensor, and uh, that's pretty much it, guys. That's after everything is done. I 
torqued all of these. I torqued these to 10 Newton meters, um, as well as all of these here. And then basically, that's it. That's basically how you, you install the, um, the piece of E-valve or unit in this uh, B8S4. Um, I'll leave some information relating to the parts and uh, maybe some little pointers that I didn't really emphasize through the video just to help you out a little bit. Uh, this will take you some time. Um, I took my time, did it right. I torqued everything, make sure everything is good. Uh, the, the fact that it's all the way in here, you do not want you don't want to miss something and then you have to like pull everything apart. It, it, it's just frustrating. Oh, one more thing. Um, just to, to make little things easier, put the put the fuel line in. You don't have to snug or anything. Just put it put it in first before you put the intake manifold uh, because this line has to be under the, uh, the intake manifold itself to follow through here. Um, and also make sure you reconnect your vacuum lines here. I can reconnect the sen uh, the connector for the sensor here as well. Here you have to do it first before you put it in because you see it's in a different position. But once you reinstall the vacuum line and the connector, everything is good. And uh, that's it, guys. Pretty much how you replace it. All right, man. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped you out a lot. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And uh, I'll see you in the next video where we're going to... Um, change the supercharged fluid in uh, my B8S4. Peace.